25 aspects of behavioral economic policy. Now, there are lots of biases in decision making and, and a man is not always rational. And there are various words that you need to learn to get hold of to understand why maybe people don't always make certain decisions decisions in the way that the experts would suspect that we would do. The first one of these is rules of thumb. Now, we may put in inside ourselves various rules of thumbs to make our decision making process easier. For instance, we might say to ourselves, well, what we should do is actually with a rule of thumb that we should save 10% of our income, that we will never buy a house more than two and a half times our income. So we give ourselves certain things that we lock on to to make our decision making that much easier because decision making is a very complex process and it takes up a lot of time so therefore we tend to go with sort of what we know secondly on there is a concept called anchoring and this is a concept that uh, shops and restaurant owners have, not, have known for an awful long period of time. And they often draw the example that when you go into a restaurant, if you see a big bottle of wine for, say, £100, you say, well, I'm not going to spend that. Uh, originally, you were thinking of spending £25. But then when you see the £100 up there, which is a really, really high price, and you see a bottle of wine for £50, you say, well, actually, £50 is much better than £100, so therefore I'll spend £50, 50 pounds, even though it's much more than you wanted to spend. So really, instead of spending 25 quid, you now spend 50 quid. Uh, of course, what you can do is you can create your own anchors in life. So for example, if you're a young student and you're earning five pounds 80 an hour, or say, just, just make it easy, you're earning five pounds an hour, then that is what you earn. So next, when you go shopping and you see something that you really want, say for 100 pounds, you think, well, that's gonna take me 20 hours worth of work to earn that amount of money. Now that may stop you from purchasing that particular product because you, in a sense you have your own anchors. So once again, they're a bit like rules, they're not the same as, a rule, as rules of thumb, but if you can put those things into you then, you, then you may not just go out and spend loads and loads of money, you may decide to think about it in terms of what you earn. So that's one called anchoring. Social norms are really, really important and any good school will try and construct various social norms that they want people to behave to. So for example, some schools are very, very strict and they say, right, if you get drunk, you're going to be suspended. And that is the rule. Now, when schools have that rules, amazingly, drunken behaviour falls quite considerably. Some people will get drunk, but they probably get drunk because they want to leave the school in the first place. And then they'll be removed and everyone thinks, hey, actually, if I do that, then the school may get rid of me. So therefore, in, in, in a sense, it also makes your decision making process easier. I'm not going to get drunk because I know if I get drunk, these are going to be the, the consequences. So we have various social norms around us. Right. One of the things in, in sort of Western society is probably we actually do drink too much, particularly in the UK. And, and, and they did this global drug study. And what they found was that those people who drank too much, 25% of them thought that they drank less than the average. Because the, because the norm was that people do, do in fact drink a lot. So they thought they were drinking as much as anyone else, but in fact, they were, they were putting their own health at risk. 25% of them were. But if you asked them, they said, well, actually I don't drink very much at all. I, just, I drink much less than the average. Okay, even though, they were actually heavy drinkers. So social norms will also play a part when it, in, in our behavior. So for instance, during the 2008, 2007, 2008 credit crunch, the, the norm was to go out there, lend lots of money, take risks, you got paid big commissions, and that was the norm. So there, therefore, you, not that you had to conform to that, but you were more likely to conform to that norm because that's how one else behaved, right? To stand out from that sort of behavior made your behavior seem slightly unusual. Okay, in the old days, when you, when you joined a rugby club, it was expected that you would have to drink a lot because that was the norm. Now that's slowly been beaten back because hopefully now people, particularly say if you play for England, it, it seems as a privilege to play for England and you're a proper athlete. So therefore you have a certain standard of behavior that, that you have. Altruism. Okay, so the, 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 the basics of economics is the man is selfish and the man is completely rational. 
but actually altruism says that actually man likes to give and pure altruism consists of sacrificing something for someone other than than self so you give of yourself to something although some people say we do that we also do that in terms of self-interest so we help others because it makes us feel better so we're really acting in self-interest whatever right but people do in fact like to give which is important hence the rise of social entrepreneurship and the last one on there is availability now if there's a lot of if, if there are a lot of drugs available if there's a lot of drink available then we put us ourselves in situations where we're more likely to drink a lot or take drugs that that's that's the rule and individuals only have a certain amount of self-control so therefore they're more likely to take drugs or to drink a lot if there's lots of drink around because it's difficult to say no sorry not tonight i don't want to drink and if you continue to say that eventually your self-control diminishes unless of course you have a very very strong self control and will not not to do that or when we go and when you when you're working for a bank and if everyone's taking risks it's very difficult to say uh, I don't want to take that risk because the availability is there for you to take that risk so therefore you're more likely to take that risk so hopefully you you, you actually might send back from them and say I'm not going to do that but then once again you're not conforming to the social norm and the rules of thumb around you may be that everyone is of a risk-taking attitude because that's why you go and join a bank. So these stop people from making decisions in a rational manner. And this is all about behavioral economics.